pretty much today we are doing a tour of Portland, kind of your quintessential what to do in Portland in 24 hours. If you are in Portland, you have to start your day off with coffee. Portland has a prominent coffee culture and there are just so many cozy coffee shops that you can experience. This one is Stumptown Coffee Roasters on Division. Got coffee. The day begins. We've been living in the Portland area for the last seven years and today we just felt like exploring the city doing some things that we think other people should do when they come to Portland. And this is arguably the number one thing to do. Go to Powell's. It is iconic. So we are in Powell's City of Books. Three floors takes up an entire city block. It is the largest independent bookstore in the world, according to them. It's pretty cool, especially for someone who loves reading. Now I, I don't like reading. I hate reading. I'd rather watch a video like this, but it lets you get like a little shot of pretty much any sort of subject matter that you want from like sports to religion to food, pretty much anything, it's here. It's pretty cool, must visit if you come to Portland. Speaking of must visits, I have a top 10 Portland video coming out soon, but this video isn't that. This is how we actually spent a day in Portland and we thought we'd share. The ideal day will look different for everyone, but I guarantee you it's not doing the walk across every bridge in Portland in a day challenge because that day sucked. My feet hurt, I'm hungry, and I'm an idiot. Oh, I'm dumb. Megan doesn't know I'm doing this. But feel free to watch my adventure if you're a sicko. There are a ton of iconic places in Portland from the Keep Portland Weird sign to the world's smallest park to Voodoo Donuts, which is terribly overrated. But getting lost in Powell's, in my opinion, tops the list. How are you liking it? There you are. <laughs> I got lost, there's so many books. We are doing a little, almost a three mile hike to Piddock Mansion and then back round trip, 2.7 miles. Then we're gonna go get lunch. But if you're in Portland, I feel like you just have to go on a hike and enjoy these beautiful trails. Best part about walking to Piddock Mansion, you don't have to pay for parking. Seriously, that's the best part. <laughs> and we're not even gonna go inside. It costs like $12 or something. We're just gonna go check out the view. Piddock Mansion has one of the best views of the entire city. And I know I hate on old houses and museums. The bottom line is that it's just an old house. That's what it is. But you should do the tour at least once. It's an important part of Portland history. It's a decent view. Better when the sun's out and you can see Mount Hood, but. It's so pretty. All right, we're hungry. Time to go to some food carts. Classic Portland activities food carts. So we are at a food cart square, which they have these kind of throughout the whole city where there might be like eight, nine, 10 food carts. And it's just a really good way to support local business, honestly get some really cool flavors. And today we are getting ramen. Is that not ramen? I don't know, babe, it doesn't look like ramen. Turns out we didn't order ramen. <laughs> They'll show but you ramen. That looks really yummy. So we gotta go order ramen. <laughs> Can we get the show, you want the show you, babe? Really, really good. <laughs> but? But it's not ramen. It's not ramen. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. That's it. So we just got to the Portland Japanese Gardens. There's like any top 10 you list of things to do in Portland, this is on it. Problem is, the last admittance is 3.30. It's 3.30 right now. And they close at 4.30. So only get an hour here. This is the second display we've seen of rocks with smaller rocks raked in a circle around those rocks. Honestly, it looks super cool. I don't know what it means. I'm guessing it's significant. What I can tell you is I feel like I'm being rushed because we only have an hour. And this is the kind of place where honestly you'd go to reflect for 
I feel like maybe an hour and a half or two hours. At least for me, I really want to look inward. Because I saw a video that said this isn't going to invoke strong emotions, but it's going to accentuate the small ones. And I feel like that's accurate. But because we're rushing through it, it makes it hard to do so. Just finished up the Japanese gardens. I was trying to get tranquil. Megan was. You've never Megan tried was to get tranquil your whole me. life. I honestly think that if it was raining like a downpour, I feel like I'd be able to just be so calm. Or if it was super sunny. Right now it's kind of cloudy and it's the end of the day, so we kind of got rushed out of there. But we'll come back. It's almost, what, 4.30, 5 o'clock. If there's a blazer game going on tonight, we go to that, but there isn't. But if there was, this is what you can expect. Reasonably priced tickets, a good time at the Moda Center, and if you're lucky, very lucky, the Blazers will get the win. And right now, there's Moda, we just beat the Warriors. You gotta go to a blazer game if you're in Portland. And so, we're gonna go watch a movie at one of the many Bruin View theaters in Portland. Studio One Theaters. This is a multiplex entertainment venue here in Southeast Portland, and just a really cool spot. They have city-themed theaters with couches, recliners, and just comfy seat arrangements. Full restaurant service to all the theaters as well as in the normal dining area with delicious food and drink. But they have live music and events throughout the week. It is just a vibe. And when booking a couch or seat through the reservation page, you can see which seat arrangement is chill versus intimate. You can probably see a couple over my right shoulder here. They were macking about 20 seconds ago. And a little uncomfortable, but super cool, super cool intimate setting, couches everywhere, and I picked this exact seat. Kind of a business classy seat. <laughs> Gonna grab a beer, watch Fast and the Furious. I'm sure it will be like every other Fast and the Furious movie, so I'm stoked. That was ridiculous. And super funny how ridiculous it was. Fast and the Furious, so good. Well, so bad, but so good. It's about family. It's about family. And then we were off to our Airbnb. And there are just so many cool ones in the Portland area, including this brand new modern ADU in Mount Tabor. It's run by a few of our close friends who we watched Survivor with. And since Megan and I were one of the first guests to stay here, we thought we'd share our experience. So there's the ADU, but what's really cool is they actually have a free destination charger. I mean, that's their Model Y, but if you do need a charge, let's go right there. Booyah! Plug her in. And that is complimentary service right there. Okay, so this is actually a really cool Airbnb lofted, which who doesn't love a loft? And so down here, you've got a nice little couch, little area to have coffee in the morning, which they provide coffee. You kind of have a full kitchen, almost a full size fridge, dishwasher, full stove or a full sink stove, chef mic, microwave, clothes uh, washer. When you come in, you are greeted by usually some wine, they say, but today we just have water. A um, couple kind bars. Nice little flower plant there. <laughs> what I will say is it is super comfortable in here. It's actually, it says it's 65 degrees. I love 65. Megan probably wants 75, but uh, that's okay. The fact is, is that it's about 85 degrees outside and it's actually pretty cool in here. So, so we are gonna check out the bathroom, which this is honestly probably my favorite part of the whole house. Not that bathrooms normally are my favorite part. But the fact that there's like actual real plants, smells amazing. Smart mirror, although I'm stupid and I don't know how to use it. Heated floors, so it's yeah set to 76 degrees right now, which is insane, 77 degrees. Towels and you have cords and power and everything, complimentary, everything you need. Then Megan's actually in the shower. And then man, super nice shower, big shower head. Uh, whatever this thing is, never really use those, but uh, shampoo, body wash, conditioner, everything's just so perfect. This feels Scandi to me. Is this Scandi design? Megan. Oh, uh, yeah, I think so. Thank you, love Scandi. Um, done with the bathroom, let's go upstairs.
So this is kind of just where you sleep. Real plants, once again, which I love. Um, super nice linens. And this is super cool. You get your own robes. And you might wonder, what do you need a robe for? There you go, yeah. baby. Because you've got a hot tub. And it's like a triangle tub, which fits really perfectly on this deck. And honestly, it feels actually feels pretty private. You've got this cypress here. You've got a privacy wall here. And uh, Megan and I are in a hot tub. Airbnbs with hot tubs, they're simply the best. Even if you only are in it for like five, 10 minutes, it just makes the whole experience that much better. So this is definitely a really nice perk of just Airbnbs in general, but this one has all of your streaming services already set up. Prime, Netflix, YouTube TV, Apple TV, HBO, but if you know me, you know exactly what I'm gonna watch. Dunkin' Donuts. This place is sweet. Thank you everyone for watching and I hope you enjoyed our rendition of the quintessential day in Portland, but there is a number of different ways to do this city and I have a ton more Portland content coming given that summer's right around the corner. So stay tuned for that. More Oregon Coast content, Oregon content in general, travel content. I love you. I love you? What is that? What is that? But stay tuned for more travel content and we'll see you in the next one. See ya. Thank you.